shut your machine off you can shut it off from the front here by pressing and holding till the machine shuts off there's a main on on off switch underneath here you're going to want to remove the top it just makes things easier as far as accessibility usually there is a screw right here holding down the top and once that screw is removed this top was stuck because there's some sauce there um, this is why we don't like sauces on top of machines so once we have the top removed and you do not need the top removed to remove the side panel I just like to remove the top so I can see have more visible light there is one screw in the front here that you want to remove this screw in the back can stay. This is where your number three Phillips comes in handy. These screws you're just loosening. And now we can remove the side. Just pull it off to the side and lift up. And now we have access to our steam valve. Moving. Starting on this side, we have our heating element. We have our safety uh, thermostat, which when it trips has to be manually reset. Uh, and what that will shut off is um, our main board, which also sh shuts off a contactor. Which is? Our contactor is right behind this box here. Gotcha. Our pressure switch is right here, which you have access from underneath the drip tray uh, to do your adjustments. So you adjust a pressure switch? What? You can, yes. Okay. Which would also affect your temperature on your groups. Here is our level probe, which sends a signal back to the board for the filling of the, the boiler. Here's our vacuum valve or anti-siphon valve. Here is our safety uh, overpressure valve. So if for some reason our machine is overheating, overpressuring, this valve will open up and there will be lots of steam coming out of it. That's, uh, that's when you come in in the morning and your whole building is full of steam. Is that the, yes. is that the, the, that's, that's the, the culprit? culprit. That's okay. the culprit. Here is our brewing groups with our brew valve. And of course this machine is a three group. Here is our hot water valve solenoid. You wanna get this is our upper tube to our sight glass. And then you see down here is our pump motor and pump. Where's the adjustment to it that? It is facing straight down, which you have access from either underneath the machine, there's an access hole there for it, or access area for it, or you can get also get to it from underneath the drip tray. Okay. And then behind this box here, which if you remove this side panel, you have access to your uh, main co uh, control board. Will that, sorry, will, will that probably be the same on the Appia Life as well? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any tips as far as maintaining the Appia? Uh, the, the main thing is that you're going to rebuild at least on a yearly basis, depending on use, is your steam valves. Once a year. At least once a year. 
Your so, vacuum valve you'll want to replace once a year. And then all other components really is going to be on an as needed basis depending on use. Okay. I have some high volume customers that we replace the brew valves and the pressure switch every other year just due to their volume. Okay, so they can talk to their service technician about that. Okay. So average 200 drinks a day, 150, 200 drinks a day on this machine would be a good... Yeah, I want you to do more. You can do more. Yeah. Could you do 400? Yeah. Let me give you a tip on the Appia 2. Uh, the reason we do not recommend these for high volume is because the membrane up here will wear through and people typically will wear out the membrane, then break the, the button on the board behind it. So if that's the case, even though it's just one group you're having an issue, you have to replace this whole panel here. It's all one panel. And then if an individual board behind it is broken, you'll have to replace that individual board. Uh, expensive? It's, yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> and so if you're higher volume, let's say 400 drinks a day, you're going to want to look at the Aurelia yeah, Wave. I would look at the Aurelia Wave just because the buttons will last. Everything is much sturdier and doesn't have an issue with wearing through. Perfect. Thank you. Only thing, we're just going to component placement underneath here. Okay, great. So to look at the components underneath our drip tray, which is going to be our flow meters, our inlet valve. There will be two screws that have already been removed. This, this is called a safety tray. It is not designed to be a drip tray. So um, don't think removing the tray and then you can pour stuff down on this. It's not designed for that. And this can be removed. So down here is where we have our main water coming in and a shut off. So you can shut the water off right here. That comes with the machine. This valve here is our manual fill valve and also is used as a drain. So to drain the boiler, we would shut our water off. So to drain the boiler, you're going to want to shut your water off. Wait, sorry. Shut your water off. And then make sure that your machine is completely depressurized and off. And then you're going to take this three, uh, 13 millimeter bolt out and then you will open up this valve and that will allow the machine to drain. So if you want to renew your boiler or you know get get the water out, out of the boiler and put some fresh water in, this is why you would drain it. So once it is drained, you want to put your 13 millimeter um, nut back in or um, bolt back in. It will have a copper washer on it. And then you go ahead and open up your main water valve and leave this open for about 20 seconds. You'll hear the machine filling and then shut this off. Make sure you shut this off. Otherwise you will overfill your boiler and you'll have water leaking out of your safety valve, which is up here. We already looked at that. Okay. So the other components we have, this is, this is our boiler fill valve. So whenever the boiler calls for water, this valve is going to be opened along with the pump turned on to fill the boiler. And this is an additional shutoff to the boiler in case you wanted to keep the machine pressurized and work on a component before that so that you won't get water draining off the main boiler. This is normally always on. This is normally always off. So the next component we have 
This is our expansion valve. And these are our flow meters for each individual group. And then we also have our main on off switch underneath this. And last but not least. So the on off switch is under here. Oh, yes. I feel like, yeah, okay. This block assembly that's attached here, these, these three silicone hoses are coming off of our brew valves and draining into our drain cup. It is not uncommon a uh, customer removes this to clean stuff and accidentally knocks this loose and now it's no longer draining into our drain cup, it's draining inside the machine. Uh, another common problem we have is sometimes a hose will pop off due to coffee may have been uh, bridged inside of here. So if they find that, they just need to make sure that this is all clean and then put the hose back on. Now is the coffee from coffee grounds dropping from yes. the top of the machine? Okay. No, or from coffee grounds coming from our group. So for some reason, this is why we tell people never backwash uh, or do your cleaning without the screens in place because then you run the risk of having any loose coffee grounds that are hanging out, that's where they're gonna end up. They're, oh. they're gonna end up in your valve or down in here. So you do your back flushing and cleaning with the screens in, but then yes. you take the screens out and soak them? Yes. And clean them, okay. And it is always a good idea to go ahead and every now and then take this tray out to clean because it will get filled up. And of course there is a little slot right here that needs to be clean. And just put your two tabs underneath there. On the two group it's just one tab. And then put your screws back in place. And then Make sure that when you put in your drain tray back in that you always have the hole over the other hole. Okay. Oh, what's this? That is sauce. Oh. That's caramel sauce. Oh gosh. Okay. Caramel sauce. Are you going to clean that off for them? Yes, I'm going to clean oh, it off. Oh, it's, it's very it's very yeah, it's very sticky and yes, tacky. It's very sticky. So, just a trick on putting your side panel back on. Uh, sometimes you're going to find that it's hard with this back panel. So, I always like to just reach inside and move my back panel back a little while I'm putting the side panel on. And oh, I, so you're pushing this back? Yeah, I'm pushing this back. Okay. Because you'll see that if you, so, so if you come over here. Okay. So you see I'm trying to put my panel on, but it's catching or it's gonna overlap the wrong way. So if I just reach in and push my panel back, then it will all just go nicely. Very nice. Cool deal. Oh, it's such a beautiful machine. So the most the most common problem we have with the Appia is is in high volume situations, we have problems with the button boards breaking and the, the pad itself wearing. Uh, and just the, the groups themselves, the, the, the brass mass that is there, that's where you lose some of your temperature stability versus the, the Aurelia wave. So on the groups, the the material on the group heads is just not quite as much as the Aurelia Wave. Correct. But you're still getting a quality. You're still getting a quality machine. 
you're just not getting as precise of a t temperature stability. You know, it's interesting in espresso equipment, you really, the more money you pay, the more you get, right? Yes. It's kind of the thing.